Welcome back to another UNC football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, that is called Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me, as she always does, when we talk about Carolina Tar Heels football recruiting, our very own Miss Dina King. And Dina, another big day on the trail for Mac Brown and his program as they land a kid that I know you have uh, followed for a couple of years and you love his potential Four-star linebacker from Shelby, North Carolina, Malachi Hamrick, is now announced he will be a Tar Heel. What are your thoughts? I know you love this kid. We've talked about him in podcast and a lot not on podcast, and uh, he's someone that you've really, really been digging for a while. First of all, he comes from a region that Carolina has not had a lot of luck, and Coach Brown determined to – mine Cleveland County because in my opinion Cle- Cleveland County football was one of the top areas in the state all four of their high schools produce really good players and it was just a huge pickup to get their first in-state commitment out of Hamrick and like you said Shelby High School it's probably well it is the top program in the state victories, wins, probably state championships. It's just oozing with a championship pedigree. And Hamrick is one of the key players, um, 6'4", 200 pounds. So he, and they play at the 2A level. So when he played, he played like defensive end for the Golden Lions, but he's got the, the, the size that they want at that outside linebacker. And who knows, he may actually play outside linebacker this year for the line. So he had some really wow stats. I mean, he had like, oh, 25 plus sacks in 2019. I can't say last year because it's been no almost year. 15 months since some of these kids have played. <laughs> we're, we're actually about to hit last year. There is a, just for some of the people who may not know, uh, North Carolina and Virginia actually have spring season starting uh, around this time, they didn't have fall seasons. The private schools in North Carolina played in the fall, some of them anyway, not all of them. And Hamrick, of course, attends a public high school, six foot four, 200 pounds. And when I look at the clips of him, and you and I have talked about this going back to when you saw him a few times in the summer, this past summer, that frame can easily take on, you know, 25, 30 more pounds. And as he gets to Carolina and, and matures, phys- even matures even more physically, I don't think there's any question that he can add a lot to that and remain uh, the breathtaking athlete that he is. A couple schools of note that also offered him Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State, Auburn. He could have gone just about anywhere, and he's staying in state. And I think it's important to note the in-state thing because the class of 21 was uh, heavily, heavily loaded with in-state kids because it was a great year for 21. 22, you're not going to have as many because the class isn't going to be as big, Dana. So the first three kids were Virginia kids. Now they get one from North Carolina. We're thinking between 10 and 14, probably a max of 14 for this class. And part of that is because of the scholarship situation with the NCAA not basically giving everybody their year back this past year. So Carolina fans that follow recruiting need to understand that maybe the staff can be a little bit more selective. And uh, getting someone like Hamrick, though, is a guy that, you know, selective or not, if you have an opportunity to get a commitment from him, you do. So if there's only 10 more spots that get filled, this is a big piece to the te- to a 14-piece puzzle, especially being the first one in state. I believe he may be number five in the state right now. So, uh, you know, when he got – I mean, I've been covering a couple years when he first got the offer. I remember – before he even got the offer, he was really highly um, on UNC. He, to be honest, uh, I felt the vibe at, that he would pro- eventually be a Tar Heel when I first interviewed him because he he said he had several family members with, that were Tar Heel fans, and he just seemed like everything he said was really, really positive toward UNC, and uh, he kind of – did the slogan, the best in Carolina play at Carolina. So that, that was huge, especially from, like I said before, the region that he he's from, 
in the Shelby and in that area that's borders South Carolina. I mean, he's basically closer to Clemson and South Carolina in Columbia than he is in Chapel Hill and stuff. So huge uh, to get a player like his caliber at one of the state's top football programs. Well, I remember when you had him at an event during the summer. I, I want to say it was late June. It was one of those really, really hot camps that you were at. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But that, but we talked about him, and you told me that – I'm not going to – well, okay, I'll do it. Andrew, I think he might go to Carolina. He's told me that afterward when we talked after that camp. And, and it actually uh, – kind of spawned the idea of doing a podcast about that part of the state. And we did a podcast about that part of the state and the importance of care of this staff as they continue to build that fence around the state of North Carolina, that that area was an important part of completing that project. So getting him, uh, you, you've already alluded to it, but expand on a little bit more about the importance of getting a kid from that area and some of the ones they've missed in the past, maybe. And, and just how, as Matt continues to turn all the needles into the right, heading in the right direction, uh, this is just another one of them. It was, uh, to, to begin with, it was at one of the camps. It was at one of our VTO Sports High School Regional Camps that we had down at Matthews. And the reason I said that, because we, we had a lot of talent at that camp. I mean, Travis Shaw was there. Jalen Walker was there, Raw Raw Dilworth, Albert Red, Dontavious Nash. A, a lot, lot of really big time kids were, were at that uh, event. And Malachi, being a linebacker, the linebacker class was loaded. So you had Malachi in there with Raw Raw and Albert Red, who is Raw Raw's former teammate at Glenn. And, it looked like Malachi was just really kind of bonding with the quote, the Tar Heel kids with Nash and, and uh, Ra Ra there. And he, he, you know, he, he just, just seemed like he was kind of were, uh, and I, I said this before, Ra Ra attracts everybody. So yeah, he does. go here and then it was like a paparazzi, top kids would follow raw raw wherever he goes but like, like i said everything basically very positive from malachi whenever i would talk to him and back to your question about that area you know crest is another big time high school yeah. in uh, cleveland county and there's numerous there's there's so many kids that that have went on and played at the next level, at the highest level in the NFL that, you know, uh, the Spots kid uh, and Jonathan Bullard. And it's kids like that that went to Florida and didn't stay in state. And then Shelby, you got Dax Holyfield, you know, Carolina was uh, in the mix for him. And uh, being from Shelby, he went to on to Virginia Tech and, Kings Mountain, they did get Kobe Paysour. So they, they're making some progress in that area. So I'm not going to hurt my other, uh, my colleagues at Burns High School. I got to mention them. So you can't <laughs> mention, can't leave out of one school because I'll have all Cleveland County out, out on me on my, my website, NC Preps. But yeah, and, you, and the thing about it is, is you would. So it would be. Those it would school be schools. They really produce a lot of a lot of talent, and um, Malachi. He's not the only target on that Shelby line yeah. squad. Uh, his teammate Santana Hopper is another uh, four-star defensive lineman that a lot of teams are after, including UNC. And he's related to Tyrone Hopper as well at Carolina. Uh, yeah, I, I think the important thing that people need to remember about this class and we'll, as we continue to do these podcasts, commitment podcasts or other podcasts we do about recruiting for the class of 22, it's not going to be a big class. And there's not going to be a ton of kids in North Carolina in this class. So they're hitting Virginia hard. They've been hitting Georgia pretty hard here lately for 22 and 23. And, of course, the D.C. area, now that Virginia is going to start playing football again, um, I think we're going to see more offers go out to kids like in Northern Virginia as well. Uh, but there will 
But if the North, but getting uh, you know half the class is North Carolina kids, and let's say it's seven, getting an anchor piece from that part of the state is huge. It's just Mac moving everything in the right direction again, as I said a few minutes ago. So Malachi Hamrick is a big part of the class of 22, no matter where he's from. But the fact that he is a Shelby kid makes it even a little bit uh, bigger of a pickup for the Tar Heels. Last comments for you before this. Well, close. Andrew, you know, like we discussed, there's certain positions that are loaded in North Carolina. Linebacker is one. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me to see – UNC possibly land three linebackers from in-state. That's how talented the linebacker class in North Carolina. So they they may get certain positions in North Carolina and then have to go out of state. I, I mentioned offensive linemen, you know, due to COVID, they've not been able to evaluate offensive linemen. So they focused up in Virginia. They done got one, Trevon Green, Travion Green up in and and in Virginia, and so they got a lot of lot of offers out to Virginia kids like Zach Rice, Gunnar Givens out in Tennessee with uh, one of uh, the kid out there. So and and some guys down down south. So it's it's huge. It's huge to get that first North Carolina kid in the, this place. I also think you're going to see this staff under, you know, as long as Bateman's there and as long as they're running the defense that they run, they're going to get a lot of the defensive backs and linebackers that can move. Linebackers, kids with some good frames, you can add some weight on them and they can move all over the place. You can, they can, you get them on, on the campus, they can end up a lot of places. You can never have enough kids with decent size, good size, that can go sideline to sideline. That's what it's all about. And, you know, Mac did that his first time at Chapel Hill. Uh, sideline to sideline. I remember when they were increasing their speed every year on defense, trying to get to where Florida State was. Florida State was the ultimate sideline to sideline defense back in the day. Carolina got to that point in 96 and 97. Bateman's defense a little bit more attacking, but you still got to be sideline to sideline. You got to be able to, to be able to, to, to cover the whole field with the way the offenses are these days. So you can never have too many kids like Malachi Hamrick on your roster. His frame, when, when he, like you said before, Coach Hess can mold him. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to compare yeah. him to Desmond Evans, but he's 6'4", 200. He had a hand on the ground. He played defensive end at Shelby. So he's used to coming off that edge. So uh, they're recruiting him as outside linebacker. He's got a perfect frame for that. Uh, got good sideline to sideline speed. And, you know, Coach Brown is always – had those type of athletes that could just run from one end to the other and run people down. Uh, 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 and so um, just huge, huge. Absolutely. And he, he's a kid that, that, that really has been high on UNC the whole time, the whole process. Well, he's now not – Formerly a Tar Heel, but he eventually will be when he signs next December. Uh, Malachi Hamrick is the fourth member of the class of 2022 to commit to Carolina. It's not going to be a big class, but he's a big-time player. This is a huge piece to what this class is going to eventually become, and I'm sure the staff is thrilled to have him in the book, so to speak. She's Dana King. I'm Andrew Jones. You've been watching another UNC football recruiting podcast. Be sure to go to our site, TarHillIllustrated.com. Check out all of our content. We thoroughly cover recruiting for football and basketball and the football and basketball Tar Heels. We go wherever the Tar Heels go at TarHillIllustrated.com. Thanks for stopping by.